Do you want to create website content that both your audience and search engines love? In this video, I'll guide you through a strategy for writing SEO friendly content that ranks you higher in search engines and also keeps your readers engaged. I'll talk a little bit about keyword research and I'll show you how to take those keywords and group them into clusters that you can use to make pages. We'll also get into content silos, which is how you take those pages and organize them into a clear structure for your website. I'll also share some tips on using AI tools to streamline your process while still ensuring that your content is high quality, helpful, and resonates with your users. And we'll end the video with a stress-free way to plan your upcoming blog posts with a content calendar. I'll be using a tool called SEMrush a lot in this video. And if you want to check my description below, there's a link where you can get a free trial if you'd like to follow along with me. First thing I want to talk about is keyword research. If no one is searching for the topics you are writing about, nobody's going to come to your website, no matter how good your blog posts are. With keyword research, you can see what your audience is searching for so you can plan on what to write about. Each piece of content you write should be focused on a primary keyword that you want to rank for. You want your primary keyword to have a decent amount of search volume without having too much competition. SEMrush is amazing for keyword research, especially using their keyword magic tool. So let me show you how that works really quickly. We're going to enter a keyword right here. And then after we put that in, it is going to show us similar keywords, the search volume and the keyword difficulty, which is the amount of competition. And from here, you can pick a keyword that has good volume and low competition. Now I have a more in-depth tutorial that I did all about keyword research. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check the description below for that link. Next, let's talk about creating high quality content. Very recently, Google put out an update called the helpful content update. Now this had a lot of people's websites lose traffic if they were creating pages and content just to manipulate search engine results. Google really wants you to focus writing for people and not for search engines. They want you to emphasize quality, originality, and value. This update has multiple benefits because not only will it rank you higher in search engines where you think of your website users first, but you're going to make them happier and want to visit your website more as well. So when you're writing content for your website, you want it to be accurate and engaging. And although you are doing keyword research and you are working with those keywords, you want your writing to be natural and you don't want to keyword stuff. So we are not just smushing a bunch of keywords into our content and saying them as often as possible just to hope to get ranked in the search results. It's not going to work. To check to make sure you're using keywords correctly, you can try out the SEO writing assistant with SEMrush. And here it will also give you readability tips to make sure your blog post is easy to read. And then you can click in for SEO tips, uh, checking the originality and the tone of voice of your blog post. So this is going to be really, really helpful for you. Ideally, it's a good idea to hire a writer that has firsthand knowledge of the topic they're writing about. But can you use AI to help out? Yes. Google's official stance on AI is that it's acceptable as long as it's helpful reliable and not created in order to manipulate search engine results. Google will reward high quality content no matter how it's produced and is not going to automatically penalize AI content just because it's AI. With that being said, you definitely don't want to do something like write me a blog post about breakfast food or whatever topic you're writing about, obviously and then just copy this and post it directly onto your website. Don't do that. AI is best for research and inspiration. You should always edit, fact check, and use your own experience and firsthand knowledge with any AI content you create. So what I do 
is I like to say something like this. Make me an outline for a blog post about breakfast food. And then I'll see what ChatGPT decides that it thinks that I should write about for breakfast food. And then while I'm here, I'm going to look at this and say, well, I don't really think I'm going to put something in about why breakfast matters, but I definitely want to put in something about omelets and there's nothing about omelets here. So I'm going to add that in there. You want to use AI, but also use your brain. So then I would say something like, can you help me write a section about omelets? I always spell omelets wrong, but you are going to forgive me. And so is chat GBT. And what it did is it put it in this blog post, which I didn't want it to do. So again, the thing with AI is you can't just let it be in control of everything because it'll do stuff wrong. So I'm going to say here, please write me a section about omelets separate from the blog post you already did. You guys are seeing that I can't spell separate right either. So you're learning all of my shameful spelling stuff. And now here we have a section just about omelets. Now what I would do is look at what ChatGPT gave me here and I would take my own knowledge of omelets and use this as inspiration for me to write an even better section on this blog post about breakfast food, about omelets. So that is how I use AI to help me create content for my website and how you can use it also. Okay, so you did your keyword research and you also know how to make your content. So now what we want to do is we want to take those keywords and make them into groups called keyword clusters. And we're going to make your content for your pages using those clusters. Keyword clusters are an SEO strategy where you take similar keywords with the same intent and you group them together to make pages. Once upon a time, we did SEO by creating one page for each keyword. But search engines have evolved in a way to promote pages that make more sense to the user. So now instead of having one page that answers each part of a question, we have one page that fully answers the entire question. This not only helps search engine rankings, but also the user experience. This helps create detailed topic focused content that everybody loves. The keyword strategy builder in SEMrush can help you make keyword clusters. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now I've got some primary keywords over here. Now it is giving me a warning that some of these are broad keywords, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. Being more specific is better, but for the sake of this tutorial, this is going to be fine. So I've got my primary keywords here and then I'm going to click create list. And then this screen comes up and it says it's preparing keywords and it says it may take up to 15 minutes. So we're going to give this some time to complete and then come back to it. And when that's done, it's going to show you something like this. And in this specific situation, it has given us 10 topics and 500 ideas for pages. Now, again, for a tool like this, you're going to also still want to use your brain because all of these pages are not going to work for your specific business, but this is going to definitely help us take those main keywords and then find the other keywords that we can group together to build pages. So if we scroll down to where it says page details, you're going to see these pages. And then if you open them up and look into them, you can see all of the keywords that make sense to go on that page. So we have the egg recipes page, but also all of these keywords would be great to put on when you're making that page that is for the topic of egg recipes. This tool also gives you ideas for pillar pages, which is fantastic because that's the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. So pillar pages, which are also sometimes called content silos, are a way to organize your website into sections based on specific topics. This is again, really good for search engines and also really good for the user experience. So usually pillar pages or content silos are broken down into three levels. 
we've got the top level page, which is going to be for the broad topic that defines the rest of the content silo. So for example, for this pillar page, we have the main general topic as healthy breakfast ideas. Next, we have the second level pages, which are going to break down the topics even further. So now under healthy breakfast ideas, we have easy breakfast quesadillas, breakfast snacks, fast breakfast near me, etc. And when it makes sense, we could even do a third level to break that down more. And for example, for breakfast snacks, we could also create pages that are specific breakfast snack items, like maybe protein muffins. And you want to use the keyword clusters you made to create these pages. Ideally, you would want to avoid linking between the different content silos and keep your internal links in that one silo to share the link juice between those topics that are the most relevant, but don't feel like you have to be too strict there and miss out on potential opportunities to link to relevant content in other silos. You can set this up in WordPress really easy by using your main category pages as the main pillar pages for the content silos and then using blogs in that category and then other blogs in uh, subcategories of that category to create the pages for that content silo. Okay, so we did our keyword research. We took those keywords and made them into keyword clusters to plan how we're gonna build our pages. And then we organized those pages into content silos. Now let's go ahead and get your blog posts planned. It's a good idea to plan out your blog posts in advance with a content calendar so you don't get writer's block and you don't get stressed out. So go ahead and take whatever calendar tool you like best and plan out when you're gonna post these blog posts. If you're wondering how often you should post new content, it kind of depends on the size of your website. If you're just starting out or you have a small business or you don't have a ton of resources to write a bunch of articles every week, one to two articles a week is fine. You want to hit a balance between regularly putting out fresh content and also making sure that you've got enough time to create high quality content because we know how important that is. If you have a larger website with more resources, feel free to aim for four to five blog posts a week. And remember, you can write blog posts now and schedule them for later in WordPress. So you just want to be editing your blog posts and then over here where it says publish and it says immediately, you're gonna to wanna to click that and then you're going to want to choose a different date, whatever date you want it to be published on and then click schedule in the top right and then schedule again and then your blog post will automatically be posted and published at that selected date and time. And that's it. Now you know how to write content for your website that your users like and the search engines like. If I was helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. If you're building your own website, make sure to check my description for a link to download your free nine step roadmap to DIY your first website which will walk you through everything you need to do to get your site live from start to finish. Thank you so much for watching.